Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Trinity. We're glad that you're here for a special Sunday. This is our welcome Sunday. It's a time in which we get ready and launch our ministries for the fall and uh, kick off after a busy summer for so many of us. We are glad that you are here. Uh, just want to share a few or three, couple of three announcements with you. Number one, Charlie, our music director, tells me today that we, in what we have here today, and he's giving us the official thumbs up, this is going to be a compilation of the best bluegrass artists in the state. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and hearing that, and I know you are too. We do this special for this time for each year for our Welcome Sunday, and we will have them with us today. Uh, Charlie, because sometimes people aren't always sure when to start singing, when we have a different instrument playing, he is going to direct us with either a head bob or a, a thumbs up or something to tell us when we start singing Church in the Wildwood or whatever it is. I believe all of the hymns are in your bulletin today. Uh, we will be using the bulletin for uh, a new member that we have joining today. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in the life of the church. I will remind you, of, uh, didn't make it in the bulletin, but the nominations committee meeting is today at four in the media center. Uh, also, one other word about uh, if, if you are visiting with us today, we are glad to have you with us. This is a great Sunday to be with us. Uh, it's a little bit different than what we normally do. Uh, we do a little bit more of uh, uh, a blend of music at our early service, but for today, we're going to blend it into together. Now, what Charlie has told me is that our instrumentalists are also going to have what we call, now, I don't think we call it this in the church. I think right after the the, the benediction and, the, and, and, and all of that is what we call the after party. Is that what we're calling it? Sure, okay. They're going to continue to play down here. You are welcome to stay and come down front and listen to them. Uh, if you've got other things to do, you can go, but this is going to be a unique opportunity. We are glad that you're here today, and we invite you to stand and greet one another. In the name of the Lord. Our call to worship is found in the bulletin. 
We gather here this day to hear God's word for us. We praise God for the opportunity to gather together. We are sent forth from this place to share God's transforming love. Lord, encourage us and empower us to do your will. found in the bulletin. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, Son of God, your the blessings know no boundaries, boundaries that faith cannot cross. Strengthen us to trust in your mercy, reach out for your healing, and receive your reconciliation. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
I would now like to invite the children who are present to come forward for children's moments with me. How is everybody? Good. So I have some puzzle pieces here, and I'd love for you to take one. So just pick one. Choose a puzzle piece. All right. Hey, girls. Okay. Okay. Now, who can tell me what our puzzle is? What's the picture of our puzzle? Did you see it? Doggone, okay, don't tell. Can you look at your puzzle piece, your individual puzzle piece, and can you tell me what our picture might be? You're so smart. You can't tell just from the one piece, can you? But if we were to spend some time putting, I've got lots of puzzle pieces here, don't I? If we were to spend a lot of time putting our puzzle pieces together, this is what it would look like. Did you think it might look like that? With all of those beautiful colors? That's a, that's a pretty picture, isn't it? A pretty picture of flowers. But I don't know that I would ever be able to guess that if I just had that piece. Would you? No. Well, I was thinking about the fact that the church is a lot like this. We each have an individual place and an individual gift that is who we are. God has given each one of us special gifts, but we're all part of one body. We're all part of one big picture. And you know what that big picture is? It's the picture of Jesus' church. It's a picture of one body, Jesus' body. It's a picture of all of our different beautiful individual parts of ourself that come together that make the all world see Jesus in God's light. Now, sometimes people don't know that they're part of the puzzle and, and we're missing their beautiful, wonderful gifts that God has given just to them to share so that others may know about God. And other times, we don't always get along. Do y'all always get along with everybody all the time? Like even brothers and sisters? Okay, I was just making sure we were speaking truth here. Good. So there are some times where we don't get along. And you know, sometimes when we don't get along, it's because we want our way. Have you ever, like, yeah, and it's so easy for us to point out other people's wants, isn't it? But, but if we look at ourselves and we say, Sometimes we don't get along because I want my way the way I want it. Have you ever felt like that? Oh, we're done speaking truth up here then, aren't we? Well, sometimes some people like me, sometimes we get into places and times and, and situations with people where we want what we want. But it's important for us to remember that it's not just about this. Can I be a puzzle all by myself? No, I'm just a piece of it. So if I can come together with all of you and we can put all of our pieces together along with all of these pieces, it's a beautiful picture that others would be able to know it's a flower. But when we put all of our gifts together and when we all want what is best for God's church and we come together and we do it together, can we say together? Yeah. That's right. And share with one voice. That's when God is most glorified. So I want you to take your puzzle piece with you, and every time you see it, I want you to think about, how am I a part of the body of Christ? And how can I share what God's given me to make that picture more clear? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our gifts. Help us to love one another, to help one another, to serve one another 
and to listen to one another so that we can become one just as Jesus prayed we would. We love you. Amen. The letter to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter beginning with the fourth verse. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The Word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. seated. Because we have some uh, visiting instrumentalists, musicians with us today, I thought I would just take a moment to thank David Prosser, Randy Lucas, David Holder, our own artist in residence, Worth Llewellyn, and Charlie Haraway for their work today. We, we are blessed. Thank you. My friends, will you join me in prayer? Abundant God, we each have gifts, and we're thankful that we are part of the one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we read your word, it will become part of our lives, that our lives may become part of you and testify to a world that needs it. In Jesus' name, amen. Rarely do I have as many people call me, text me, email me, message me as I did this week about an article in the newspaper. It was in the state newspaper. There was an article, it was in yesterday's paper, I think it even continues today. It's, a, it's an article, you can find it online, it's, it's making the rounds on Facebook, you can go to the state's website. It is, a, it is an article entitled, Losing Faith, Why South Carolina is Abandoning Its Churches. It's a pretty strong article. It talks about over the past five years how many United Methodist churches have closed, how many members from the Southern Baptist churches and the Presbyterian churches and the United Methodist Church. The numbers are down. And these, this series of articles gives voice to that concern of many of us. It speaks to our future, perhaps. And then I saw someone else texted me about an article they saw online about 10 reasons Americans go to church and nine reasons why they don't. I'm reminded this week of the saying of Karl Barth that we as Christians have to hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. Especially when we have this Ephesians reading that speaks of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father in all and above all and through all. What are we to make of the church these days in our state and in our community? The thing I've come to understand, apart from the article, is all of this talk of oneness reminds me of an understanding that a professor gave me one time of the Christian church. And what he said was, it's. Imagine a giant diamond. 
in the hand of God. And that giant diamond is the church. I think a few of you might have a diamond on your hand or two and you might look at it and if you hold it one way, it sparkles one way, you turn it another, it, it shines, another facet shines a different way. Well, that giant diamond is the Christian church. And that when God turns it one way, God can see the light shining through in one strong particular way. To turn the, the, the diamond around another way and to see another angle, another facet of the diamond shining brightly. I've come to know that in the diamond that is the church, that there are some things that Baptists do very, very well. And if you turn that diamond, there are some things that Episcopalians do very, very well. And independent denominations or non-denominational non churches do very, very well. We are one in Christ. But according to this article, in the paper. I wonder, I wonder if we've lost some of our luster. And I wonder what is it that we can do by the grace of God to find our meaning and our purpose again? How does Trinity United Methodist Church do that? How do we find what we are to be in the world? That verse seven stands out to me, where it says what Paul calls the grace given to the measure of Christ's gift. I think that every church has its own special giftedness, its own measure of grace. How has God gifted us to be the church? What is the measure of God's gift to us as United Methodists? I guess it starts in our United Methodist understanding and of John Wesley and his understanding of what it means to be human. That all of us as human beings are in relationship with God and that somehow that relationship between us and God has been broken. It has been severed. It has been interfered with. Whatever you want to say, because of sin, because of suffering, every one of us has that brokenness and that sin in our lives. And God is reaching out. That's one of the things that you will hear in the United Methodist Church and with John Wesley, especially is this understanding that God is reaching out to us, that God is doing these things to love us. We call that grace, that love for us and that desire to move past our brokenness and our sinfulness, we call it grace. You'll hear a lot about grace in the Methodist Church. You'll hear something about prevenient grace, which means that God has been reaching out to you and loving you long before you even knew it. That's why we baptize babies. Because we understand that long before that baby comes to understand a single word or a single concept that God loves that child and God loves us. And even when we grow to be 54 years old, we still don't understand it all. God's grace goes before us, before we know it, before we understand it. And then there's that second part of what Wesley called about it with grace is justifying Christ that God, you remember like the old typewriters of right justify, you know, make that margin right. By what Christ did on the cross, as Paul says, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. 
that proves God's love for us. Christ paid the price for our sin and our brokenness, and that is the grace of justification. And then we call this understanding of sanctifying grace. It is the love of God that goes with us in all of life and helps us grow and understanding and knowledge and spirit and truth into what God would have us to be. So we as United Methodists talk a great deal about how God is reaching out to us through grace. Wesley talked about how God reaches out to us through what we call the means of grace through study and fasting and prayer and worship, be it with a banjo or timpani or choir or organ. God reaches out to us through this service that we are in and loves us and corrects us and holds us. God reaches out to us, as Wesley would tell us, through small groups. You know this thing about small groups? Friends, it's not new. Methodists have been doing that since John Wesley walked the earth. We learn our means of grace and let God work in our lives through our service to others, through our works of tra charity, Sakahachi, feed my starving children. Not only did, were children across the ocean benefited and blessed by those meals, we as God's children were blessed and built. So all of this theology and all of this abstract divinity Well, what do we make of it? In light of what we read in the paper, so what might be the better question. But what do we need to know in order to be faithful, to be relevant in the community? What is there about our past and about who we are that can help us reach to the future. That's the question. Because we can't, we need to use the means of grace. And what that means is we can't be agents of competition. We are a competitive people. And sometimes we look at church membership and attendance as if it was an item on the stock market. Well, U.S. Steel is up. Well, the Methodists were down this week. Or we look at it like it's a scoreboard. Well, we got more people in worship today than church Y. And somehow we begin to look and see that we're in competition with other churches. But if we're part of that diamond, if we're part of that diamond, here's a secret. We pray for other churches. We pray for them. We learn from them in ways we can while keeping our unique heritage. But if we make competition our buzzword, our reason for being, then it won't be long until we'll be turning out the lights in this place for a couple of generations. I heard the other day I was talking to another pastor, and one of the things that, that we always find out is that sometimes what we in churches do is we swap members. Kind of like football teams trade, you know, get a first round pick and a choir member to be named later. But we, we, we swap members. By some estimates, all of the churches in Sumter County 
have between 25 and 30,000 people in them. On the membership rolls, a little bit less for attendance. And sometimes the only ones we really care about is that 25 to 30,000. But the population of Sumter County is between 110 and 115,000. We could pack every church in Sumter County and still there would be people unreached for Jesus Christ. So we can't be agents of competition, nor can we be agents of complacency. Do you know what they're going to put, the, what the, the, the seven last words of a dead and dying church is? We've always done it that way. My friends, we need to hold on to the gospel. We need to hold on to the traditions that God has given us through scriptures, through experience and reason. But we must not be complacent to the point that we stop reaching out beyond ourselves. The bedrock of the gospel cannot change. But gone are the days where we could just open these doors and people would flock in. What do we need to do to be faithful, to be relevant? My friends, I think it means that we have to be a means of grace. Or perhaps another way of saying it is an agent of grace. It means that you carry God's with, love with you in the world and the things that you do in the world. That they will know that you are Christian by your love. Wesley called it practical divinity that what we would be is a means of grace that people would come to know Jesus Christ by how we live as individuals and churches in the community, that other people out in the world will grow in Jesus Christ because of the ways that we love, by the ways that we carry on our lives in the world. Not just for us, but for the 80,000 people in Sumter County who are not part of a faith fellowship, who are not growing in their life with Jesus Christ, who need to know that love. That article is depressing sometimes when you read it. But here's what I know. When the church does what it's called to do, when we are agents of grace in this place and wherever we go, when we are what we are called to be, then all of this will take care of itself. Sometimes we have our priorities backwards. We worry about power bills and offerings and things like that so that we can do what God would call us to be. But if we are doing what God would call us to be, the budget, the staff, the church's future will be what God calls it to be because you and I as Methodists and members and friends of Trinity 
are called to be agents of grace and mercy for a lost and dying world right here in Sumter. Read the Bible and read the paper, but be an agent of grace and mercy as a church and in your personal lives. To Jesus Christ be the glory and honor. Amen. And now as the word of God proclaimed among us, we invite you to stand and offer the affirmation of faith. It is page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As you remain standing, I invite you to look in your bulletin as we sing our next hymn, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite Beth Abrazino to come forward.
And I'm going to ask our sound crew to turn on this wireless mic six, please. Hello, Beth. Beth, it's good to see you. And you, tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been coming here to Trinity? I've been coming since March. And tell us how you found this place. Well, I found this place um, when, I, when I came. I actually was in a Bible study with two of our members, and they were telling me about the church, and I'm come by and tell And here I am. And, and it's kind of grown on you ever it's since. It's grown on you ever since. Now, are you part of a Sunday school class yet? I am, the Friendship Sunday School class. The Friendship Sunday School class. All right. Well, I know that you will welcome Beth with, um, today. She wishes to join our congregation. She's wanted to do that for a couple of months and has just been trying to figure things out of when to do that. And I thought today was an appropriate day to do that. So my friends, I invite you to turn to page 38 of the campus. I'll let you hold that, okay? And I will ask you these questions and uh, point you where you go, okay? And the congregation, you'll have a part there uh, at the end, okay? We're on page, the top of page 38. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. As, mem as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend Beth to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. And the congregation responds. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will our faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. My friends, would you join me in welcoming Beth to our congregation? It is a day of new beginnings. One of the things that's new in the life of our church is something that is happening this afternoon, which marks a transition. Our youth ministry, Angela, as you know, has been uh, transitioning from the associate pastor of discipleship since the spring of this year. And today we start with our parents meeting for uh, our new youth uh, ministry that we have. And friends, this, this is just the tip of the spear. This is going to be um, a wonderful disciple-making uh, opportunity for us in, at Trinity and for our community as we look beyond ourselves to others. And so I'd like, Angela, why don't you ask, tell us a little bit about what's going on and how this is different. It's absolutely appropriate that as we welcome Beth as a member of this congregation that we too renewed our vows to uphold the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Because in this coming year, we're hoping to uh, make a transition of sorts, but to keep some things the same. We have some incredible volunteers that have been working with our youth for several years, and they have been amazing and continue to be amazing. One of the things that I want to share with you is that we want to not just rely on our volunteers for our children and our youth ministries, but to be able to rely on the whole church. A child will have 936 weeks, basically, between birth and graduation. And sometimes we miss those moments to embrace a toddler or to encourage the imagination of an elementary school kid, or to affirm the worth of a, of a middle school child, or we miss the opportunity to motivate 
and to equip high schoolers to go into the world to serve, not just in a career, but especially as a Christian. It takes every single one of us. If you read the Trumpeteer, you know that we're going for the words together, and then the phrase one voice, so that together with one voice, we may speak love and grace and truth to the children and to the youth in this church, because we are not raising kids. We're raising adults. And it's important that each of us with all of our gifts come together so that we might offer them those gifts, that they may have a tool belt that prepares them for the world, not just as an adult, but as a Christian. Friends, I think it's highly appropriate as we talk about this today that we have a special time of prayer within the shadow of our morning prayer. So I'm going to offer a prayer for us for this new direction for our youth and children's ministry. Let us pray. Lord, we talk about one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God in all and through all and above all. Help us to be the church with children and youth together with one voice. We pray for our volunteers. We pray for all the work that has been done to prepare for this day and for the coming weeks. Lord God, bless the youth and children of our community and help us in those 900, over 900 weeks of life that they have with us to prepare them to be your children even as they grow. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And as we prepare, uh, before we go to our morning prayer, just a reminder that we do have our parent and student orientations tonight for children beginning at 3.30, youth beginning at 5. This is not just for Encounter and Kick and Kick Junior. This includes information about our music ministries for children and youth. It includes Sunday school and all of the different ways that we're able to share God with the kids and the youth, not just here at Trinity, but throughout our community. So please plan to be there. Today as we go to God in prayer, we do have much to be grateful for. And we do go as one body, with one voice to God, to give thanks for those. Miss Grace, it is good to have you back in worship with us. For those who are battling diseases and those who are grieving loved ones, uh, let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, merciful Jesus, ever abiding spirit, your justice is the working out of your mercy and peace on earth. Nourish us with your power and let us grow into the image and likeness of Christ. Humble us in our self-conceits so that we act not arrogantly but with humility, with patience, and with love. Equip us for ministry on behalf of all who cry out to you. Help us to live lives worthy of the calling to which you have called us. You are the God of laughter and the God of tears, the giver of joy and the comforter in our sorrow. Hear us as we pray for the sick, we pray for those with chronic illness, for those who have life-threatening conditions, and for those with inadequate medical care. Bring the healing that we need. Hear us as we pray for all who are hungry. We pray for those who live in regions of drought and famine, for those who cannot afford nutritious food, and for the vulnerable who are not adequately fed. Give us the food we need, O oh Lord. Hear us as we pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who mourn a loved one, for those whose communities are no more, for those who have lost 
homes and memories and tangible items due to fire, and for those who cannot imagine a joyful life. Give us comfort to restore hope. Hear us as we pray for the world's victims. We pray for all who are caught in violence, for those who are trapped in others' self-seeking, and for those who suffer from neglect. Grant us freedom from all evil. Hear us as we pray for the poor and the poor in spirit. We pray for your help against all that oppresses as we look forward to the kingdom you have promised, the kingdom you are bringing even now through Jesus Christ. The Lord, Jesus prayed that his followers may all be one. In the power of the Spirit, we join our prayers with his. Take away all hatred and prejudice and whatever else may hinder us from godly unity that as there is but one body and one spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of us all, so may we from this day forward be of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of peace, of faith and charity. And may we together with one mind and one voice glorify you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. At this time, I would invite our ushers to come forward as we take a moment to offer God's tithe and our offering.
Lord God, we are thankful for the ways that you gift us. We are more than just puzzle pieces in a great puzzle of life, Lord. We are gifted by you and each one of us separately. We pray, O oh Lord, that for these gifts that have been given in this plate this day, for places like Aldersgate Special Ministries, and we pray, O oh Lord, that all that is given and all that is shared will be to your glory and honor. These things we ask in your name, O oh Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen.
open to the Holy Spirit's leading and grow as a member of Christ's body. Love with God's love. Be at peace with yourself. Make peace with others and prepare for the coming kingdom. You are one with God. Go now and live as one with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.